Let's finish up this chapter with one of the most well-known neurocutaneous syndromes, neurofibromatosis, or NF. NF comes in two flavors, NF types 1 and 2. We'll be catching up with these syndromes at the new Flavor Cafe. Newly reopened, they're certified sustainable by the Rainforest Alliance, 100% fair trade, all organic, and after the fumigation, now vermin-free. Over at the order counter, we'll start with neurofibromatosis type 1, aka von Recklinghausen disease. This is the most common form of NF, affecting 1 in about 3,000 live births. NF1 is caused by an autosomal dominant mutation in the NF1 tumor suppressor gene on chromosome 17. That pink ribbon doesn't just certify fair trade and all organic. That's our recurring pink cancer-fighting ribbon, our symbol for tumor suppressor genes. And for chromosome 17? Just think of the 17 letters in von Recklinghausen. Unlike many of the other phacomatoses we've discussed so far, NF type 1 has 100% penetrance, meaning 100% of individuals who possess the gene mutation, genotype, will have some manifestations of the disease, phenotype. That said, the extent and severity of the symptoms, i.e. expression, is variable among affected individuals. NF1 encodes neurofibromin, a GTPase that inhibits the RAS signaling pathway, just like how this new flavor cafe, Broom, is supposed to inhibit the RAS rat. Mutation of NF1 leads to constitutive RAS activity, and therefore cell cycle activation, which is basically asking for tumors to develop. Let's talk about clinical manifestations. We'll begin with cutaneous findings, since those are the most common and noticeable features of NF type 1. The skin lesions in NF1 are readily identifiable and even have a characteristic order of appearance. First, cafe au lait spots, flat, hyperpigmented macules, develop in the first year of life and increase in number during early childhood. Freckling then develops and has a predilection for skin folds, especially in the axillary and inguinal regions. While not technically skin, the next lesions to appear are Lish nodules. These growths are raised, tan-colored hamartomas that form on the iris of the eyes in older children. Luckily, Lish nodules rarely affect vision. Finally, the pièce de résistance, neurofibromas. These are benign peripheral nerve sheath tumors predominantly composed of Schwann cells, which are embryologically derived from the neural crest. Since Schwann cells form a swirl of myelin around axons, we've symbolized a Schwann cell here with that swirl in the espresso foam. Perineural cells, fibroblasts, and mast cells can also be found inside neurofibromas. The most common and characteristic neurofibromas are the cutaneous variety, which present as soft, fleshy, sessile, or pedunculated growths, mostly on the trunk and neck. Just think of the neurofibroma foam bits collecting on the barista's trunk. On histology, cutaneous neurofibromas are non-encapsulated, composed of all nerve elements, and stain positively with S100, meaning they're derived from neural crest cells. Hence the crest logo of their new espresso machine, the Espresso 100. Another super characteristic finding in NF1 is the formation of optic gliomas, which are low-grade benign astrocytomas that can form anywhere along the anterior visual pathway, e.g. the optic nerves, chiasm, and nerve tracts. They develop super early, almost always before age 3, and can cause vision loss. Histologically, optic gliomas are composed of astrocytes that often undergo microcystic degeneration. They also contain pathognomonic Rosenthal fibers, which are stretched out eosinophilic inclusion bodies. In addition to neurofibromas and optic neuromas, patients with NF1 are also more likely to develop other CNS tumors, such as meningiomas, astrocytomas, and other gliomas. Check out the CNS tumor sketch for more. We've symbolized astrocytomas in the CNS specifically by including the astral star logo on those hats. NF1 can be associated with tumors far away from the CNS too including pheochromocytomas in the adrenal medulla. Check out the adrenal medulla Central Park sketch for more details. And in case you didn't notice, that new rainbow frap is undeniably adrenal-shaped. Just remember frozen colors for pheochromocytoma. Kids with NF1 can have bony abnormalities as well. Long bone dysplasia and pathologic fractures are common, sometimes even in utero. This may lead to formation of a congenital pseudoarthrosis which is a false joint that forms when two ends of a long bone fracture don't heal correctly. These patients also frequently have short stature, and up to 25% develop scoliosis. Next, over at the pickup counter, neurofibromatosis type 2. NF type 2 is caused by an autosomal dominant mutation of the NF2 gene on chromosome 22, which encodes the tumor suppressor protein Merlin. And there's that pink cancer-fighting ribbon again, a recurring symbol for tumor suppressor genes. The super classic finding in NF2 is the presence of bilateral vestibular schwannomas, 
aka acoustic neuromas. Vestibular schwannomas are benign tumors of Schwann cells that arise from the vestibular portion of cranial nerve 8. Again, we've got that swirl and Schwann cell design pattern bilaterally on the sides of those headphones. While they usually arise from the cerebellopontine angle where cranial nerve 8 exits the CNS, they can technically grow anywhere along any peripheral nerves. But when it's the skull, schwannomas can produce some pretty unique symptoms, primarily as a result of impingement of cranial nerve 8, aka the vestibulocochlear nerve. Dysfunction of the vestibular portion can lead to vertigo and nystagmus. Either way, no fun. Dysfunction of the cochlear portion can lead to sensoroneural hearing loss and tinnitus. That's why he's got both ears covered. He's not hearing a thing. Given their proximity to cranial nerve 8, the trigeminal and facial nerves can be impacted as well. With trigeminal dysfunction, patients can have a loss of facial sensation or masseter weakness, as evidenced by that covered face and loose jaw. Facial nerve dysfunction, on the other hand, causes facial muscle weakness or paralysis and loss of taste to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, hence the droopy face and senseless tongue. Histologically, vestibular schwannomas are encapsulated tumors of neoplastic Schwann cells, with alternating areas of hypercellularity, Antony A, and hypocellularity, Antony B. Antony A areas show spindle cells with buckled nuclei lined up in a band-like formation. Antony B areas are less cellular, with myxoid stroma and occasional cystic degeneration. So, over on the poster, we have an encapsulated frap with alternating layers of hyper and hypocellularity. Schwannomas are of neural crest origin and will universally stain for S100. Patients with NF2 may also develop multiple meningiomas, benign growths of dura. In fact, multiple meningiomas seen in children should raise suspicion for NF2, even if it's the only presenting finding. As many as 75% of patients with NF2 will develop cataracts at some point in their life. Furthermore, development of retinal hamartomas, meningiomas, or even retinoblastoma may cause visual impairment. Most patients with NF2 will also develop a spinal tumor, leading to motor or sensory dysfunction. While the most commonly seen is a spinal schwannoma, patients may develop spinal meningiomas or ependymomas as well. Sorry, excuse me. Hi, uh, yeah, I'll take a double Antony Frapp. To go, please. And, uh, a cafe au lait. Uh, gah! They've returned! And in greater numbers. Everyone, grab a brew! Throw them to death!